So in this video, I'll be showing you all the tools I use for almost all of my projects. This is kind of an update video to a 10 must-have tools video I made a while ago. I'm also going to provide links to where you can get all of the items that I've listed off in this video in the description below. So if you want to buy any of this stuff, you can. So let's start off with some safety and sunglasses. The safety glasses will keep stuff out of your eyes, and the sunglasses I actually use when I'm using my soldering torch. But instead of sunglasses, you should get some welding goggles or some soldering glasses. If you're working inside like I do, you're going to need some way of ventilating your area. And if you happen to get one of these, be careful not to burn the filter like I did. This is basically just a little fan that sucks all the fumes away. I have it hooked up to some aluminum ducting that goes to a window, and this makes it so I can get all the toxic fumes out of my room. So for all of my measuring, I use these calipers. They're very inexpensive, and they're accurate enough for just about anything you need. So let's talk about torches and soldering. For just about all of my work, I use a Smith's little torch, and it's hooked up to an oxygen and acetylene tank setup. So this setup is pretty expensive, especially if you're just starting off. Luckily, there's a lot of other options, and they're a lot cheaper than this one. So instead of starting with one of these, you can actually start with a propane torch. And you can get a torch in like this with a starter built in online for very cheap, and then you can just buy the canisters for about $5 or so. I actually prefer this torch end over the other one because it has a finer flame to it, but you'll need a starter for this one seeing that it doesn't have one built in. So in my work I use a lot of solder. I mostly use solder chips, but rarely I use some solder paste. It really just depends on what I'm doing. So you won't be soldering anything without flux. I use handy flux for just about everything. I do use the other one on gold pieces and some silver, it just depends on what I'm doing. Tweezers are an absolute must for me. I use them to align pieces, place solder, and quench the parts when they're extremely hot. A solder pick can also do a lot of the things that tweezers can, besides it can't pick up the piece. Some kind of third hand setup is extremely important when putting different pieces together and holding them in place. You can also use thin steel wire to hold things in place. Just make sure to remove it before pickling the piece. So you're going to need a place to solder, and you have some options. This is a charcoal block that you can solder on, and this is my now broken honeycomb soldering block. I use this for the majority of my work. And this is just a steel screen. This along with the tripod will allow you to heat the piece from above and below. The screens that normally come with the tripods are usually pretty thin, and I've actually melted through one of them when heating a piece. So I upgraded to this way thicker one, and I've had no problems with it. I really like this setup of all the multi-layer parts on top of the tripod because of the versatility of it all, and it allows me to keep all the hot materials off of my bench so it doesn't catch on fire. You can really set yours up however you like, but I really suggest getting a tripod if nothing else. I use a very small amount of pliers for my work, and there's a lot out there that you can buy that do all different types of things. Just make sure they don't have any teeth on them so they don't scratch up your work, and you should be fine. A small assortment of metal cutters and wire cutters can be really handy, but for the most part I just use a jeweler saw to cut most of my wire, and I mostly use my metal shears to cut my silver solder. Some hand files and needle files are a must. They're great for shaping pieces, cleaning up sharp edges, and removing burrs. And you can get some inexpensive sets that will last you a very long time. I also have a small assortment of hammers. I use this hammer when all the other hammers are just a little too large for what I'm doing. Also, the other end of this can be used for texturing. This rawhide hammer is perfect for shaping rings around a mandrel, and it doesn't leave any marks on your pieces. I rarely use this hammer, but it comes in really handy for forging. And this is my main all-purpose hammer that I use. It's great for straightening out wires, flattening down pieces, Pieces, and even adding texture if needed. So here's my entire sawing setup. When using a jeweler saw, you're going to need some sort of blade lubricant. So far, this is the best lubricant I've found, and it's called ProCut. But you can also use beeswax or machine oil. This one also doubles as a lubricant for burrs and drill bits. You really can't saw anything without saw blades. So these are the ones I use for just about everything, but they come in all different sizes for different thicknesses of metal. This is your typical 3-inch saw frame that I almost never use anymore because I have a 8-inch saw frame that never hits on the metal I'm cutting and gives me a lot more flexibility. So if you can start with a larger saw frame, I would do that over buying the smaller one first.
And no sawing setup is complete without having a bench pin, and the one that I have happens to have an anvil built into it. It's a pretty simple setup, and the pin itself is replaceable. I do just about all of my hammering on this. So this piece of wood right here had to be added to my workbench because my workbench has a complete flat edge to it and there's nowhere for this to clamp onto. So just keep that in mind when you're getting everything of yours set up. So here are all my rotary and drill bits. For any micro drill bits, make sure to get some very high quality ones like these, or you're going to be breaking them all the time. These diamond burrs are really good at cleaning up any of the sharp edges in places where you can't get a file into, or even adding details to things. To polish my work, I use felt and fabric polishing pads. They're very inexpensive and you can get them in an assorted pack that has about 80 so pieces. But you're going to have to use a polishing compound with your polishing pads. This is the one I use and I'll have a link in the description to it. There's a very large selection of different polishing compounds and each one works a little differently with different metals and gives a different finish. And these are emery discs. You can use them to clean up scratches or little marks on your piece. Also they are really good at taking off extra solder. You can also use these to clean up your piece before polishing it. But I find these are way better than the emery discs and they seem to last me a lot longer too. So if you were to get anything, I would highly suggest these and I wish I found them way sooner. This is a set of stone setting burrs that I've used to set small and kind of larger stones into settings. Hence the on the nose name. I also have a set of cup burrs. These are used to round the ends of things like wires or prongs. This is a set of heart burrs that I use for certain types of stone setting. and some ball burrs. For the most part, I just use all of these for stone setting. And I also have a small assortment of other size drill bits. Just make sure on the smaller end of the drill bits to get something that is higher quality than these. For making rings, I have these ring sizers and a steel mandrel. I use this along with the ring sizers to find out what the actual ring size is. Over time, a lot of the markings on this mandrel have worn off due to me using it and using it to make rings and shape them around it, along with doing finishing work. So I'm going to need to get myself a new one of these very soon. So these are step mandrels, and I use them to make different size jump rings, along with smaller bezels. Each step is about one millimeter different from the last, so it makes it very easy to figure out what size you're going to be making. This is my pickling setup. It's basically a small crock pot, some pickling solution, some copper tongs, and a neutralizing bath. If you'd like more information on this, I've made an entire video dedicated to how to get this all set up, and you can find the link in the top of this video or in the description below. This neutralizing bath also doubles as my quenching area. So this is my flex shaft motor and the hanger I use for it. This particular hanger is absolutely terrible and I've had to put screws through it to keep it extended. I'm going to be ordering a better one in the very near future. If you're using a Dremel, this will work perfectly fine. But if you're using any type of flex shaft that has some torque to it, it's going to break this mount and I highly suggest buying a better one to start off with. As for this entire flex shaft setup, everything works perfectly fine, and it's one of the cheaper ones that you can get. I've had it for a couple years now, and it works just the same as when I got it. The handpiece has an adjustable collet on it, so you can use all different types and sizes of rotary bits. Also, the handpiece has a quick release on it, so it's interchangeable with others. The one problem I did have with it is the foot control pedal went out on me, so I upgraded to this one, and it's been working for a couple years now. I really do suggest getting this over a Dremel setup. Even if you use the same foot control with your Dremel and have the flex shaft attachment, the responsiveness on this type of motor is way better than any of the Dremels on the market. And with both setups, it almost costs the same amount, so you would be better off getting the flex shaft setup versus the Dremel. This is a very inexpensive dapping setup. Basically, these tools are used to add curvatures to things or to make domes. I've actually used them in the past to make this bracelet and this necklace. Just try to keep moisture off of them because they will get surface rust on them very quickly. And I'm in the process right now of cleaning them all. 
These are some bezel setting and finishing tools that I haven't used very much recently, but I'll be changing that very soon. These ones happen to be stainless steel. They also make brass and stone ones. And you might be surprised, but these two pieces of dowel can help you a lot when setting bezels. And you'll probably see this in the near future. So Renaissance wax is used on your work to keep it from tarnishing, but it doesn't really last that long and it can be worn off really easily. So an inexpensive and better option is this lacquer. It holds up pretty well and it leaves a nice glossy finish. But if you want something even better than that and you have the money to spend on it, you're going to want to get this. This stuff is extremely strong and it adheres to metals really well. And you really only have to use a very little bit on each piece. So one can will go a long way. So I like to add a patina to a lot of my work so you can see all the details or just to give it a unique style. This is liver of sulfur that I used to use all the time until I was sent some darkener from Jack's Chemicals. This does just about the same thing, but without the rotten egg smell of the liver of sulfur. No matter what chemical you're using, make sure you use some gloves. So that's just about all the tools I use for all of my projects. Of course I have others that are more specialized to just certain tasks that I didn't go over. And honestly, if you're just starting out, you don't need them. In the beginning, you really don't need to buy the most expensive tools. You really just need to focus on using your tools and learning how to work with them and work with the metals or stones or whatever you happen to do with your jewelry. And then later on, when you find you need something better, then, then you can go ahead and upgrade. So if you found this video helpful at all, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions about anything, leave me a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you'd like to be updated whenever I upload a new video, subscribe to my channel. I try to get out new videos every week. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.